My name is Carrie White and I'm a recovering alcoholic. Hi, Carrie. And I am a victory of Alcoholics Anonymous. And uh, I'm going to thank uh, Lila and Lynn and everybody that asked me to come speak here tonight. Or I forget that, my uh, courtesy that I have certainly learned through this program. I learned everything through this program. I think we should have somebody else do our what it was like. How do they expect us to remember that part? <laughs> you know? Uh, and thank God it doesn't say if you want what we think. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, I'd be arrested. So I'm going to, uh, <laughs> still. I would um, tell you that I am going to share my, uh, my behavior, you know, and not what I thought, because it really had nothing to do with my life, and it still doesn't, you know. <laughs> yeah, don't you know who I think I am, you know? Uh, or better yet, don't you know who I used to be, you know? I have a friend that always says, what we wore, what happened, and what we wear now. <laughs> and then I just wore one thing <laughs> for years, <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> oh, God, congratulations to uh, the chippers and the birthday people. I just turned 10, Cinco de Mayo, uh, uh, May 5th, you know. Uh, freedom, you know, independence for me, that's for sure. Um, and welcome to the newcomer, you know, sweetheart. Uh, you're new. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> and uh, you're not supposed to know how to do this, you know. And this is a very generous, loving program of one great authority. Uh, and thank God it's not us, you know, it's a loving God. And uh, it, it, the generosity of this program is that uh, we insist that you get a guide. You know, and, and we beg of you to be fearless and not fearful. And um, I am never, never not impressed with my sobriety, not one minute. Not one minute, you know. If I have a problem, that means I have a life, you know. I, I should be dead, you know. Uh, any day above ground is a good day for me. <laughs> you know, uh, if I didn't have to get up, throw up, and go to the dealer, it's a good day, you know. Uh, <laughs> We won't talk about what I think about it, you know, but, but truly, deep in my heart, you know, I have come to that place in the 11th step where it tells us we will have an unshakable foundation, you know, and, and things, you know, this is not like uh, a, a destination, you know, uh, it is truly uh, like drugs and alcohol, you know, it's something we experience, Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, and it's a program that we invest in. Uh, uh, certainly we invested into our using, you know, and serving our disease, you know, and for me, I just uh, really heard when they said, you know, if, uh, if you take whatever energies you had applying to your, your, uh, your drinking and turn them around to your recovery, uh, you need to do that. <laughs> and, um, okay, let's see here. I like this big clock. Kind of, you know, my, the eyes are going. I don't know why they weren't gone before I got here. Um, I uh, am an only child of a divorced alcoholic mother that I rarely ran into. And that was perfect for me. Uh, I was sipping drinks at two. I have memory of a year and a half uh, of my mother and father fighting. I remember hiding under a card table. I remember seeing a 78 record go flying by. I remember seeing my dad's legs pinning my mother's to the wall, you know. Um, it's just uh, like a tattooed painting, you know, in my head. I remember that, you know. And, um, and and then uh, sipping those drinks, and I just remember it was like I, I was in an alcoholic uh, environment, though I never even knew that word alcoholic. I knew of the word alcohol. You know, it was just was like the main focus of where I grew up. You know, if I go by an old bar, it's like, hmm, home. You know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> so it's not your grandmother's perfume. You know, uh, <laughs> but my grandmother's. 
Uh, I'm Irish and Indian, and a little fire water goes a long way, let me tell you that much. Everybody is dead from me up, you know. Um, but at five, when I started mixing drinks for my mother and her boyfriend, I, I, the adolescent bartender, um, I was mixing a drink for myself, clearly behind uh, the bar, I would put a little drink for myself, and it was bourbon, it was 7-Up, it was warm, it was sweet. Uh, it was my connection to my mother. It was what was between my mother and I. Uh, I can remember my mother was an, an animator, an artist, and uh, she used to do uh, inking and painting and that, and I, I know today that she worked at home so because she needed to create her own environment for her alcoholism and work at home so she could drink and use, you know, uh, drink. And um, I, I remember looking up to my mother through that bourbon, you know, and I was busted for drunk at nine years old. I was a daily drinker uh, starting at five. and. Uh, the phenomena that I would even have the desire to not drink and use is a result of all of you. Uh, and when I finally got here to these rooms, uh, my uh, lifetime friend, Aloma, 12 stepped me for 12 years, you know, and uh, I just never wanted to come here. And I just never wanted to not drink, you know. For me, that is the miracle, that only requirement, that desire, you know, and that's what I really try to nurture and care for, and I do that by uh, paying attention to the things that the people who are before me uh, have me have had me do and that I get to uh, uh, continue to do and say thank you to them. You know, I say that uh, the greatest opportunity we have here to stay here is not about virtue, but it's about to learn when we teach and how this program insists us to get us a guide. You know, I don't know if you're going to drink and use, but I'm always working those steps with somebody. So if I don't do them for myself, I'm here in the speaker, you know, and um, I'm usually telling my own solution to somebody because I believe the divinity of this program is that whoever I'm getting to work with is uh, uh, going to put me in a position to hear the answers that I need to have because this is always and always has been an inside job, you know. And uh, I love that I don't have to look for that dialing for dealers or go wait for the bartender, you know, to um, give me a life, you know, that I am, it's not out there anymore, you know, that my life is inside here. Um, so, I remember that part, like up to like about getting busted at nine, but it's like the rest, I don't know, you know. I mean, I can tell you that my whole life is a memory of the, of the, the drinks and, and the drugs that I was doing. When I hear people talk about how they felt when they were a child, you know, I just like, I, I, I don't remember. I was just, I was always chasing a carrot on a stick, you know. Uh, elementary school was, um, I was born on Burton Way and then uh, this one husband, uh, boyfriend my mother married and he was taking us out to these, these uh, distant mustard fields and new fresh built homes. It was a little place called Pacoima. <laughs> and um, I learned how to speak Spanish real fast and got that pachuco hop down and uh, found out who, you know, where were the, what was happening, you know, it was all, it was always to me what I saw in my home or whatever, it was all about getting out, uh, getting that stuff, that chemical, you know, and um, so elementary school, I was ditching school and uh, drinking beer uh, when I wasn't doing my mother's bourbon and uh, cough syrup and uh, chocolate ice cream, I guess. Um, <laughs> Uh, I was drinking beer and learning how to smoke cigarettes and, you know, and I'd French inhale and people say, God, doesn't that get you dizzy? And I go, yeah, that's my favorite part, <laughs> you know. I mean, it was like, I knew I just wanted like, it was like thrill seeker, you know, how much can I do and not die so I can do this again, you know. It was like, um, and then junior high in Pacoima was like slow gin, southern comfort, you know, I, I guess tequila, I guess marijuana, you know, don't ask me to pick out the seeds, roll it, but when it's done, give me a call, you know, like pass it over here. And, um, but I never not had a drink in my hand till I came here. And when I got, when we moved back to Hollywood, and here I am, the perfect pachuco, now dropped off in another culture shock at Hollywood High, you know, um, it was like, then it was like about people telling me about Ambars and Desbitals and Benzedrine and, you know, it's mixing speed. And, and what I liked about those, uh, the, that speed was that it allowed me to drink more. 
and it, I got to stay up longer and, and do more, you know, do more, do more, you know. Like this program is a program of more. That's why it works so well for us, isn't it? Um, <laughs> never enough. My sponsor said, you can't get enough love, you can't get enough money, and um, I was, there just will never be enough. If you have one million, you need two, you know? So I just, just relax. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Um, so Hollywood High and Chahi Chaha and all that, and uh, then uh, everybody was off to college. Another, I never heard of the word academic, it just was not used at my house. And um, everybody took off and I ended up in beauty school. And uh, from uh, beauty school, uh, you know, it was just perfect for me. I was an art and drama major and, uh, you know, I was people became my canvas and I got to write my own script and uh, I uh, my story so long there's just you guys want to stay till midnight I just every time I I skip over like you know big episodes you know uh, I, I had an abortion in high school uh, you know with not to my knowledge and uh, <laughs> I know everything what How, well I wasn't there you know um, but I was with this guy, and, and I thought I was pregnant. I was ready to marry him, and he said, oh, I'll have somebody check this out for you. And next thing I knew, I woke up. Not only had they checked me out, I had been pregnant. They had given me an abortion. He said, uh, he, by the way, he'd been seeing someone else, and uh, he was going to Europe to make movies. And where'd you park your car? <laughs> you know, it was like, <laughs> you know, and I just went out, and I dove into beauty school with um, great zeal of alcohol and somebody asked me to marry them there and I said yeah I don't care why not you know and and so mostly what I'm gonna like tell you about the rest of my life until I got to Alcoholics Anonymous is that it's just been one rebound after another I never made choice it was like what huh okay fine yeah mm -hmm. uh, fine I don't, yeah oh all right oh do, oh sure you know and that's just how it was you know my whole life was dictated by drugs uh, by alcohol and um, and I just never had a feeling of my own um, when uh, when this guy that I married in beauty school didn't come home one night and he wasn't with a girl, he was with a guy, I said, gee, that's nice, but I don't think I can work with this. And, uh, and I was pregnant again, and I couldn't go back to the other thing, so I had that child, and I gave that child for adoption. This is a part of my story nobody's heard until four years ago, because four years ago that girl found me, that daughter found me. And uh, that was by a power greater than myself, and thank God I wasn't in the Venice Methadone Clinic uh, drooling on myself, you know where she opened that door and go, Mom, up, uh, never mind, you know. And I have all of you to thank for the, uh, for the success and recovery of that relationship, you know, that is impossible. You know, we are the impossibles possible. And uh, if you don't believe in life after death, you know, pinch yourself. Um, <laughs> So then um, I was uh, telling my friend Mary Ellen driving up here, you know, she was, how many children do you have? You know, I have five children. Anyway, um, <laughs> from, uh, from that child that I adopted, I started life over again, and I never told anybody about that. Um, I was a playmate of the month in, uh, in beauty school uh, prior to all of that, and I had money from that. And so right out of beauty school, I opened myself a salon in Beverly Hills with no fear, you know, no brains, you know, and no hairdressers either, you know, like, <laughs> I'm here, you know, and it was like, yeah, you know, and that salon ended up being uh, filled with 14 hairdressers, and it was a mad and crazy, unbelievable, I was living my dream, life was wild, I was being taken, uh, oh, I married the guy that helped me out through the, through the uh, pregnancy of, that I adopted, that was the one that said, well, aren't you going to say thank you and marry me? And I went, oh, okay, sure. And um, so then I had two, I wanted to leave him all the time. He didn't drink. <laughs> you know how that can get us, you know. Anyway, um, so, uh, God. Finally, I did. Anyway, um, and I married somebody who drank a lot, who was a hairdresser, and I had two children by him. So there you go, five kids. Uh, but the, the fifth child was never discussed until four years ago, not, not to anybody. It was uh, just a deep armored, uh, 
a secret in my heart. I love the girl who shared about the hard edges, you know, that get softened up, you know, they, they keep getting softened up. I was thinking when I was getting so touched by everybody that took the chips and the cakes, you know, we, we come in here, I came in here so completely anesthetized, you know. I, I was so stone numb, you know, to have an unshakable foundation <laughs> uh, on the other side uh, that, um, I just didn't feel anything. I never was. I never felt anything. I was. I, I did a television show uh, after hearing that my father had died. Uh, uh, you know, 11 o'clock. I got a phone call that my father had died of alcoholism. You know, 54 years old. You know, and I just had another bottle of champagne, another gram of cocaine, and uh, stayed up all night and uh, threw some electric rollers in my hair and did a television show. You know, the next day. Uh, I mean, that's been one long day. Anyway. Um, just so anesthetized and how beautiful we come here and we get softened up and we get to feel, you know, we really get to feel because though I was working so hard to miss any of the pain, that just like deep core ancient pain, you know, I missed the joy, you know, I really missed the joy. Um, my career uh, in hairdressing uh, was was just amazing, you know, and, and it was I used to I used to think like I was following my disease so much, you know, all the time. I, that my disease, you know, uh, my my alcohol, you know, we were doing the hair and we were doing all the stuff and we were happening and we were like everything, you know. And uh, it, it's it's really so uh, clear to me, you know, that my higher power never left and that I was just guided and protected all to find that career because I I was a high school I'm just a high school graduate, you know what I mean? And uh, I I barely. I don't even know how I got through any of my schoolings. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't talk about my mother uh, for, for all that life. I just avoided everything, you know, and I made my own world. And, um, and I had a lot of fun, and drugs and alcohol, you know, worked for me because, boy, I made them work for me. I just, they were everything, you know. I love uh, the saying, you can have a lifestyle or you can have a life. <laughs> well, I had a great lifestyle, but I had no life. And... Um, Finally, uh, when it just started going down and down as my disease progressed and, uh, and, and I knew deep in my heart of hearts, you know, that everything was crumbling, you know, from the inside, outside, whatever way I wanted to look, you know, uh, things were going down. I was being woke up on wardrobe, you know, 10 in the morning on commercials and, uh, uh, you know, even this husband that I married that was a fabulous guy that I thought would never complain about my using, you know, uh, was, you know, complaining. And I was thought, ah, oh, lightweight, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I, I just, and, and, I, and I'd see that my kids were taken care of, you know, by somebody else, you know. And though they went to Disneyland or they did this or they did that, you know, I wasn't there. I didn't get to participate, you know, in anything in my life, you know. And, and it's so simple that I can tell you that if I was in the, in, the, in the tub, you know, my head was in the closet getting dressed. And if I was getting dressed, you know, I was in my car. And if I was in my car, I was making my entrance, you know. And if I was making my entrance, I was like scouting who's in the bathroom, you know where's the drink and you know I just was never like you know today my exercise still you know is to like stay in my body you know and like I call them my my wet uh, my walking and wet cement periods where I, you know I just leave it looks like I'm going to a meeting it looks like I'm driving my car just like before but I'm been gone for weeks you know anyway okay uh, <laughs> And, you know, and I heard the answer, you know, and I get all my answers in Alcoholics Anonymous. And I'll, I remember the time that uh, I got a hook on that, and that was uh, when I heard somebody read Chapter 5. And it just, you know, it's like if you can try to listen. I believe our, my first thing was like learning how to, to not use. And, and the second thing was to learn how to listen, which was really hard, like to somebody else. Um, <laughs> not my own head. And I, I that said we are we are not um, uh, you know perfect you know I thought oh that's what it is I've been trying to be perfect again no wonder I don't want to get up I don't want to be perfect again you know and and uh, and thank God you know it tells us in this uh, in how it works that we don't have to you know we don't have to be saints either to be here. Um, and, and I needed that do not be discouraged you know I needed that permission from you. And, um, Anyway, uh, 
so the last marriage uh, disintegrated and I just uh, left my shop one day on roller skates and you know hats and sunglasses I always wondered where are those people that came to me what room could they be in you know <laughs> they're either dead or in here or this is like still like dying in an Allen on meeting somewhere I don't know I mean people people came up to me and they they'd say when I first went to meetings and they'd say um, after, let me tell you, six hospitals and a recovery house, you know. I, I love Our Lady uh, that was talk, speak about her three, and I thought, hey, that's easy, you know. <laughs> and they had to pry the, the, the Mickey Big Mouth beer out of my hand to close the door to bring me in on the other side, you know. And it, and it wasn't like I was being put there by the police even, you know. Um, <clears throat> The resistance. You know, the last thing to go is the ego. You know, you see it out in the streets all the time, you know, pushing those shopping carts. Cocky as hell, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the body has been gone for years, you know what I mean? But the attitude is still running rampant, you know, like in full control, you know. I just love it. Cool, you know. It's just terminally, you know. <laughs> it's like, oh, God, I just... You know, and, and all, I know that everybody on Skid Row just had another drink and another drug than I did, you know. And uh, I, I remember the time I went to speak uh, at a place, uh, Wine Garden down there, and uh, there were about 16 men, and I know I'm jumping around, but anyway. <laughs> um, 16 men and, uh, see, I got all these people in here and they all want to talk to you. They all want to say something, you know, it's like really hard, you know, to focus it into one mouth, you know, and like, tell him about this, oh, get back to your story, God darn it, you know, it's like, <laughs> back up, back up, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> oh, God, it's hard being us, isn't it? <laughs> Recover, you know. I never heard of that word before in my life till I got here. Did you sought the dealer? Are you willing to buy a case? You know. Yeah. Um, they were drunk checks. Sobriety. I never even heard the word sobriety before, you know. Never. Anyway, 16 women, men. Yeah, 16 men. We're back at the wine garden again, kids. <laughs> anyway, there were 16 men and this one woman. And uh, I must have had six months of sobriety notes on this panel. And uh, after the four of us shared, uh, they asked for anybody in the crowd that wanted to say anything. And this lady uh, raised her hand and she started, you know, talking. And her breasts were hanging on her belly down here. And she was drooling, you know. And she just was like... Ugh. You know, how this, how degrading, how this disease just takes us through, through, through the mill. And uh, she knew more about the big book than I did. And she was quoting and going off and on and talking and talking. And, and like our lady that said, you know, I was, I was, I couldn't not drink and I couldn't drink. And uh, this lady said um, she had had eight years of sobriety. And she was married to a pilot and had a beautiful home in Beverly Hills. And at eight years of sobriety, she thought she could drink again. And now she was living under a tree with a voice screaming in her head, drink, 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 you know. And um, everybody has helped me, you know. I, I pay as much attention to the people that go out and the people that don't get here and, and uh, you know. Anyway, that was like a wake-up call for me. I heard that woman share, you know, forget what I was doing there, clean and sober. I heard her message loud and clear as well as anything else I could hear, you know, from us in these rooms. Um, my uh, experience after the last salon, we're back at the salon again. Uh, <laughs> there's still a little flashcards, okay. 1980, <laughs> you know. Uh, I... Um, just took off, you know. I just took off and I never came back and I left the house of Carrie, you know, and it was something I, I never thought that I would do, you know, was give up that salon because it was a place where I could always get a dollar and, uh, you know, I just had a, it was safety for me and I left that place with somebody uh, who had a lot of money and I sold, I was getting a divorce uh, from my uh, husband and uh, I sold my house in town and uh, got a house out at the beach and uh, not that I ever saw it and um, 
I, I just went really down under. And I always say, what's worse for an alcoholic than good luck is, I mean, than, uh, than uh, bad luck is good luck, you know. And somebody wrote on a mirror, I love you in cocaine, and I went, oh, I guess I love you too. And, uh, you know, and it was crystal champagne and calling for, the, you know, the caviar and, uh, you know, we're dropping just, just, it was just the most, it was horrible, you know, and it might sound like some great fabulous thing, you know, and, and I love when I came to uh, Alcoholics Anonymous and they said, don't judge other people's outsides by uh, your insides because I was just a bag lady in the back seat of that limo, you know, I, the only thing that was different with me is that I had an address, you know. Um, I, I kid that I, I didn't wear underpants the last three years before I got here. They were just too complicated. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, I was just an absolute mess. <laughs> I was an animal, you know. I, uh, I, I finally... Uh, Aloma was going to, you know, kidnap me and my children. I didn't know all this stuff she was plotting, you know, and going on. People were just keeping her from me for, like, years, you know, just tying her up so she wouldn't, like... I said, you can't do that, you can't do that, you know. And, and some, uh, you know, miracle one day I called her and I said, should I, should I go to the dealer or do you want to take me to one of those meetings, you know? And... Um, I almost hurt her really bad because she wasn't going to let me stop and get a beer. <laughs> she was driving my car and I was going to kick her out of my car, you know, while she was at the wheel, <laughs> you know, like, just out of my mind. Anyway, uh, through the, from the sixth hospital, um, i got to get sober here. From the sixth hospital, uh, she got me uh, into the friendly house and... Um, uh, I was going to, like, escape from there one, one more time. Uh, you know, I just never heard what was going on here. I never heard about consciousness. I never heard uh, uh, anything that, you know, you could live without a drink or uh, and that it would even be a possible, that I could be teachable or that I could ever do this. Rarely have we seen a person fail. I'll be the fail, you know. And... Um, Nobody, uh, none of the dealers were, were home uh, that I was uh, calling when I was at the friendly house and they kept putting me in these hot tubs and, and at this point I was kicking free base and, and uh, just a lifetime habit of alcohol, just never not had my, had no blood, only alcohol. And, uh, and free base, uh, I was just uh, doing just tons, uh, grams an hour, I was cooking and smoking and, uh, and I was doing a gram of heroin a day and I mean I can't tell you, I would like, you know, they talk about here like science, I mean we defeat science, don't we? I mean it's just, it's just unbelievable, you know, and then you like put this package behind a car and like go to the market, you know, or what, you know. Like, <laughs> Oh, God. Anyway, um, uh, I, I'd be in these scalding bathtubs and it just would be so much so I couldn't even feel my body. I'd want to pull my spine out of my back with my bare hands because even though I had come into that recovery house, I had used in between the hospital and my ride, you see. And um, when I got to the recovery house, all I knew is that, like, I'm going to be sick the next day. And uh, they kept... Um, putting this hot water on me until I finally had the real, real, real deal. I had three days without any chemicals in me, not from a hospital, not a Darvocet or not anything. And um, I remember Peggy saying something that is so strongly uh, tattooed on my heart, and she said, and remember, my dear, you don't ever have to do this again. You know, and I was coming down that staircase, and I was just, my teeth were chattering. I weighed like 82 pounds. My teeth were falling out of my head. I had six greasy hairs coming out of somewhere. Like, <laughs> spread them around, <laughs> you know. And, uh, uh, and I thought, she's telling you something, Carrie. If you can just remember this, you know. If every person that takes a chip and takes a cake just remembers this, that moment, you know, uh, nobody would go out. You know, the joy and the celebration of life that we have when we take that, that chip, when we, when we have our, our priorities in order, you know, the celebration of life, you know. Um, anyway, now I'm really going to talk fast. <laughs> um, as soon as I collect myself, we're going to go on a roll here. Get ready. <laughs> Safety belt's on. Uh, <laughs> 
Okay, we got the key in here, we go. Um, so, when I had three months from the friendly house, they took me out to this house that I had left and they left me alone in that house and I ran to the closet Automatic pilot, nothing to do with me. I was devoted, dedicated. I was ready to sponsor everybody. I had it all down, you know, this thing. I was like the newcomer from hell. Hey ya, hey ya, hi ya, you know. And, uh, you know, like, Ew. you know, what are you so happy about? Okay, stay away from me. Anyway, you know. um, I went to this closet and I found uh, all these straws that I had so desperately been looking for before they, well, I went to that last hospital. And, uh, <laughs> And I was down there and the girls were all at the market trying to get stuff to help me clean my house, you know, to put my house in order so I could go back and live there. And, uh, I'm, and here I am, you know, three months of sobriety, real, the first time in my life, really clean. And I'm on the floor and I'm back in this closet again. My life is about as dark as like this, you know, it's back into like a little folded piece of paper and the, the size of a glass and a thing and I'm, and I'm jamming on that anxiety to like get this, I got this smack and I'm gonna smoke this and quit before they come. I mean, I was just gone. My disease, it take, you know, my disease, it finally had me alone. You see, without those people around, okay, okay, that's fine, they're gone now, let's get back to business, you know. And, and I had that smoke in my mouth, and there was a voice in that closet, as loud as any of you can hear me, and it said, are you going to get sober or what? Well, I blew that smoke out. And I just like, I, it was, that was my spiritual awakening. That wasn't for my kids. That wasn't for anybody. That wasn't for anybody watching. There was nothing. That was the, the real change of what happened for me. I didn't want to tell anybody what I did because I didn't want to be uh, uh, so ungrateful for all the love and help that I had had. That was my feeling at that time. And I didn't tell anybody for a year and then I changed my date. I always knew for me that was a slip. Now, a lot of people can say, well, but you didn't inhale, <laughs> you know. That was a slip for me. You know, my sobriety lost its priority. I did everything. I aimed the gun, I shot, I missed, you know, but I was committing murder, you know. And, <clears throat> and, and, and that's just what happened to me, and I haven't had to use or, or even, uh, you know, I don't indulge in the, in the thinking of, of, uh, of going down those, those places, you know. Uh, I, I don't believe for one second that a drink is not an option for me. You know, I'm an alcoholic. A drink is always an option for me. There's a drink in a shoebox somewhere for me. I will never think that I am untouched from this disease. I'm only in remission. You know, I am, I am not cured. You know, I'm very, very, very clear about that. My mother, who's, uh, whose drinks I used to uh, mix. She died in County General of this disease, you know, and, uh, and I see her name in all these rooms. My mother's name is Grace. You know, and my mother died so I would get the lesson of her life you know, that alcoholism kills. And um, I, I looked up Grace in the dictionary one time and uh, I had no respect for her name even before. It was like Grace, I hated her name, it was like Grace. You know, it wasn't like Grace. And uh, in the dictionary it says that Grace is an unmerited divine assistance, you know. And uh, every day we are clean and sober nobody ahead of us has died in vain for this disease you know it has killed countries forget families and neighborhoods you know it's ancient and it's relentless and um, we are very very important people there is light where we are today you know we we are carrying the message every time we are not carrying the drink you know every time there's light in our eyes and we get to look at somebody directly and we get to, to get to uh, like have some kind of behavior out on the road and we get to like look into somebody's eyes and smile and say how you doing instead of being like so self-obsessed and having my head in that closet you know and and getting to be uh, the parent and the mother I always wanted to be and not be dead and have orphaned my children uh, my first five years, I truly believe, was uh, learning how to live with you without a drink or a drug. And the last five years has been the most difficult. It's been learning how to live with me without a drink or a drug. <laughs> and, uh, and I feel really, I feel really so changed. I don't know what's going to happen. You know, I, I got, you know, when you said I feel too. Is this what happens? It feels really different. I really feel cellularly 
changed in a way of another kind of ownership of my body, you know. Uh, I have a disease, but I am not my disease. And I, I believe I was born with this disease. I believe I was conceived in a vat of alcohol, you know. You just don't <laughs> plant two peaches and get a pear, you know. <laughs> and um, I have learned so much uh, uh, how to be uh, a parent through sponsorship, you know, and learning how to listen to somebody else, you know. Patience is something that you only learn when you're impatient, you know, and uh, thank you for sharing about fear, you know. I love that line uh, where it says it is the, the corroding thread of evil which we were shot through. I always see Star Wars, Pew! you know, it's like... I love this program, you know, I love every poetic line, there's not a casual, casual a, ah, t, or dotted i, you know, in, in any sentence of this program for me. Um, I go to a step study for almost eight years, and even when I'm not here, you know, but I'm in the room, you know, I believe the, the computer, uh, the, I'm still, it's getting recorded in, and, and if I'm not studying a particular step, I was in a room where a step was read, and, and somehow I'm working on that step all week till I get there the next week. Um, my sponsor um, rolls up her sleeves and always has time for a newcomer, you know, and she's She's taught me much, you know, we have, we have huge courage around us here, you know, we don't have to have our own, you know. Um, again, I say, you know, the way I get to say thank you to the people ahead of me is to recognize the needs of others. Uh, this program is my life, you know, it means everything to me. Uh, I love when somebody says, yeah, I like this program, but I don't get the spiritual part. You know, I say, well, what's the other part, you know? <laughs> What is the other part, you know? And, and I like to say something about uh, other spiritual paths, you know. They're all great and we are told we know only a little and we are here to expand certainly and grow. You know, this is a program which is a bridge to life, you know. Um, but uh, those other things from Catholicism to Course in Miracles to Science of Mind to Buddha to Huda, you know, uh, they do not treat our alcoholism and I've lost a lot of friends through uh, those spiritual other uh, avenues that get placed uh, further uh, putting the big book down lower on the shelf, you know. Uh, I, I, I hope you know and pray that I never uh, have that one moment of insanity, you know because that's all it is. I know people who have gone out, who have loved this program and gotten their whole life here, who have uh, been working with others, who uh, have had sponsors, who have commitments at meetings, and have still gone out, you know, and, uh, and not even wanted to, you know, and I don't know what that's all about, and, uh, you know, it tells us here, you know, they are not at fault, you know, and we are not to judge. And um, grave emotional problems, I mean, who doesn't have that, you know? <laughs> Who doesn't recover? Uh, you know, sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly. It just vents itself. I have a girlfriend who says she's peeled so many layers off the uh, onion she doesn't even recognize the vegetable anymore. <laughs> but, uh, This last birthday, you know, 10 was uh, something my daughter, one of my, my baby came up to me and she's, uh, she's now feels uh, like safe enough to like take a look at her own life. I don't mean drugs or, or drinking. I mean like what's happened to her because she feels that I'm stable now. I don't know. I can't tell you how much that means to me. You know, I remember when they looked at me on my fifth cake and said, you know, uh, we two stood at the turning point, you know. And... Um, I had a son who had six years on this program and uh, chose to go out and that was like a real battering experience for me because we got he got he came in about six months after me and and he's still um, he's still out there controlling nothing I'd want to do but um, he got sober at at 19 he was here till he was 26 you know and and it just uh, you know <coughs> I know we don't get here over burning the toast, you know, and I, I, I have to give it all to God. I just surrender, I surrender, I surrender, you know, all the time. Uh, I, I, I know God has no grandchildren, you know. Um, I just want to say thank you to my higher power and, um, and the, really the privilege to be here to get to do the work that uh, has been laid out for me. And, uh, and thank you all for putting me back together again. We 
hope you have enjoyed this recording. To obtain additional copies, receive a free catalog of AA and Al-Anon talks, or to find out about our tape and CD of the month club, call Encore Audio Archives at 1-800-878-1308 or visit our website at www.12steptapes.com. 